everybody. This is Arlis's first attempt at our cyber cafe <laughs> conversation between uh, myself, Jessica Lawrence. Um, yeah, I have my coffee as well. So, um, got my Deer Park water. <laughs> I'll bring coffee tomorrow or next week. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got uh, uh, myself, Jessica Lawrence, lead analyst at Ar at Arlist, um, and Ray Mendenia. Raymond Mendenia. He is um, co-hosting this with me. Ray, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Raymond Mendenilia. I am uh, in charge of sales and marketing. And we are actually hanging with Josh today. So Josh, go ahead and introduce yourself. All right. Hi, I'm Joshua Sullivan and uh, CTO here at Arliss and uh, happy to be here. All right. All right. So today we are having a conversation about um, remote work, which is pretty apropos during the COVID-19 um, situation. A lot of people are working at home right now. Um, as a caveat to our conversation before we get started, we are Microsoft Gold Partners. Um, so we're gonna be talking a lot about um, Microsoft Teams as a collaborative tool um, and all the benefits that it brings. But um, Josh, can you kind of talk a little bit just to start out about what remote first means? It's a term that we see a lot um, in the news and on the internet right now. Yeah, well, um, so you know, at, the, at the basis, it's a shift of uh, the the user experience from being in an office together with with their um, whatever collaborators or, or um, uh, fellow employees, and now everyone's remote. So what used to be you know a, a portion of the company, a portion of individuals, uh, but you know some people were remote. Very few, very little organizations were all remote. And so what does that mean? That 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 means that. Um, we're finding workflows shifting a lot more from uh, what you call technically synchronous communications, where just like right now, we all have to be together at the same time, to more asynchronous communications, where it's a quick little message, it's a quick file share, it's a quick uh, call out somewhere. Um, you know, a shift in the inboxes from, example, uh, with Microsoft from Outlook more into uh, the Teams interface. Um, you know, I heard, heard a great observation the other day that uh, Microsoft Teams is is the new Windows. Right? It's becoming the new operating system for the business, and it, it is where everyone else has to kind of commonly work together and, and come together and replace some of those uh, social norms that have existed in a, a you know, shared space is now uh, virtually. Sure, which, I mean, this is a prime example of what we're doing right now, actually. We're having this conversation, you know, virtually over Teams. So our list is a, uh, a cyber defense company, a digital transformation company. Um, so from our perspective, like what what becomes um, more of a challenge in terms of cybersecurity um, when working remotely? Yeah, well, uh, what used to be a very centralized problem uh, has just become a far more distributed and decentralized problem. When we start talking about now what was once all co-located in, in an office space and we're able to do the security around there is now distributed at everyone's presumably home office or their kitchen or wherever where they're trying to do work, right? Their, their, their the living room, right? And, um, you know, what might have been considered a, a private conversation going on in that living room is now getting more greatly exposed into into the uh, corporate environment, and then alternatively, also intellectual property and, and internal uh, control conversations are also now showing up more in the personal private environment. So you have this this commingling between uh, com company resources and and, and personal resources. Um, now, in that commingling, it's not just in terms of our our conversations and our data flow. But it's also the IT infrastructure and all the infrastructure that supports that, right? Um, you know, we don't, we're not right now using dedicated lines. We're sharing lines with you know, presumably our families and whoever else we've, we've, we're in place here. Um, and they have demands on the network just as much as anyone else. Uh, they have, and unfortunately, uh, unless you've put in a firewall or other mechanisms to protect the corporate IT systems from those personal IT systems. You have some commingling of at least the signals on the network. You have some commingling of, of interactions. If if those devices are configured to to be very noisy on the networks, you might be having some things being intercepted, or um, you know some devices will reach out and, and try to find other devices on the network and, and share information. Uh, what used to be a defined boundary at the office now needs to start becoming a defined boundary at home. 
right? And and you have the challenge of how to protect those boundaries when it used to be that you worked for a company that kind of took care of that for you, right? Exactly. So uh, what, what's curious is that regulations have a tendency of always lagging. And so the, the rules and standards and policies just aren't there yet in terms of uh, providing an overarching framework and governance way for, for companies to address this. Uh, we have been continuing to hear more and more uh, intelligence reporting from, from our partners at, at FireEye, for example, about uh, you know, they have some of the world's best threat intelligence, but you know, nation state actors coming after individuals at their homes because they know that those systems are, are now far less defended than they are at work. And they're going there to build a foothold and then use them to laterally move into to more important parts of the business. And so, uh, you know, within the, during the first couple months of the pandemic, there was a significant more risk taking going on, right, with the systems and allowing for policies and exceptions to the policies, right? We, we drastically lowered our standards. Uh, you're seeing a lot of investment right now. Uh, you know, uh, FireEye, you know, they had a they had a great quarter last quarter. Well, because there's been a, a lot more intrusions and they've needed a lot and, and customers have needed a lot more help, right? So. Um, you know, there are adversaries out in the world that their mission and they're paid to get onto these systems, even if there's a pandemic. And so how do we now protect that at home as much as we do at work? What's it mean now to bring not only the work to home, but also now the security to home, right? The threats to home. Um, now, I think by powering through this, by learning through this, we, we build out organizations and capabilities that are much more resilient over time. And um, you know what, what we thought would take years is taking months to figure out. Sure, yeah, necessity is indeed the mother of invention. Exactly. All right, Josh. So we got a lot of people working remotely now, and a lot of people trying to transform their business and adapt to all these different cybersecurity concerns. Uh, what are your three big takeaways that you want to make sure people know about? Let's go through this right now. Yeah. Um, well, so three big security takeaways. Um, you know, make make sure that you have a, a good antivirus, you know, good good uh, endpoint security on there that has a, a threat inform capability. Uh, we're very excited about what what FireEye offers in terms of their endpoint security, as well as what Microsoft offers, uh, because those two capabilities work very well together. We actually recommend both combined from a, from an all threat perspective. Uh, we also recommend a degree of, of boundary protection, probably virtualized, right? Uh, it's actually very straightforward to set up a SASE on your own tenant. We, we, we are happy to help clients do it, uh, but to redirect that traffic through your, your tenant anyways, uh, such as on, on your Microsoft Azure system, and, and uh, provide your network security there. Right? That helps knock down a lot of the problems you might have with uh, some of the threats at your employees' homes. Uh, third is uh, paying attention to what works and doesn't work. There, there are a number of policies that didn't work very, work very well to begin with and have now broken. Um, we have to pay attention to now where this is going and start building those new policies and recognizing where, where we do need to accept the, make those exceptions and shift to a more instrumented approach, right? So it means leveraging the instrumentation that are built into your Microsoft tenant uh, understanding the identities of, of the profiles that are that are being accessed at, at the time, uh, looking across those interactions. Microsoft does a great job, and they, they're, re they're releasing some new capabilities when it comes to the information protection, right? With the uh, Azure Information Protection, that with tandem to the endpoint security means that the information in itself has better protection in terms of when to get downloaded, when it's shared. It's all marked. It's all tracked. And even better, if something bad happens, you can also reach out and grab it. Cool. Okay. So um, it's funny that you mentioned the whole thing about um, um, FireEye and Microsoft being better together. We were just talking about uh, the white paper that we had written um, related to that. So that's available on our website. That's artalist.com. We have a resources page um, and several white papers, um, one of them being the, uh, the all threat Microsoft and, um, and FireEye better together. Um, and we also have a couple of, uh, we have a webinar coming up. We have a couple of webinars coming up in August. Um, August 26th, we are, uh, we have a webinar that's um, an educational uh, for uh, executives of small and mid-sized businesses um, looking to learn, you know, what 
they can do to um, to protect their their organizations during this time and really any time. But obviously, it's even more important now that you're working remotely. Um, and also, we will be having one related to uh, government contractors who are looking to learn more about CMMC. Um, that is going to be uh, scheduled for August 27th. Um, and we are going to put that up on the website today so people can start signing up for that. So um, again, that is artalist.com, A-R-D-A-L-Y-S-T.com. And there's a resources page where you can find um, the white papers and there is an events page where you can sign up for webinars. So, all right, well, that I think concludes our first cyber cafe. Um, <laughs> a term from the 90s that we are reinvigorating for our own purposes now. Um, we are going to be doing this on a weekly basis and posting it on social media. So, you know, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook and uh, and continue to see what we uh, what we're going to be talking about in the future. So thanks very much. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you.